Hello everyone and welcome to the episode 6 of the Art Design Workshop tutorial series. And in this episode we are going to look at DNSpy and reverse engineering. DNSpy is a .NET reverse engineering tool and we are going to use this to try understand how Bannerlord is built and what can we use out of the existing code base. And uh, the way I use DNSpy is that I make heavy use of the search and analyzer. And to make the search work uh, as well as it can, uh, we want to open as much of the original code into DNSpy as possible. So we just come to File and Open. And first up, I will go to the Steam Banalo directory and bin shipping client. And just take all the DLLs or everything that starts with Tail Worlds. Just open all of these up. Select them all and open up. And then I will go to the modules and go to the native bin shipping client and also include all the, all the DLLs from the native module. And finally, I will go to the sandbox module and open up all the DLLs from the sandbox. And I find that opening the DLLs from these three places gives me enough coverage to basically do everything that I want. So the way you search for things are you can press here on this uh, magnifying icon or just press Ctrl Shift K to bring up the search. Then over here on the right, you choose the type um, or you choose like what you are searching for. So you can search for um, number or string or or any type of like C sharp object or any type of C sharp object. So the default I think is all of the above. This usually it gives like too much results. So if you, for example, search for workshop, this will give you like so many results that it's like very hard to find what you're looking for. So usually um, type is quite useful. So just search for the type. And then to limit your search even more, so this this already this gives like a maybe manageable amount of results for workshop, but still, if you know if you're looking for exactly workshop, you can click options and match whole world uh, whole words to get, find like exactly the thing you're looking for. So, for example, if you want to find find mission, this match whole word words is very useful because just searching for mission will give you way too many results. You can really figure stuff out if you just spend time reading this decompilation view. Well, for example, for my speed runs, I've looked at so many things. So I looked at how the inheritance works when the last noble of the kingdom is killed. I've looked at the values for the towns, like what determines the town value in bartering. I've looked at like birth rates. I've looked at how persuasion works. You can figure out so many things if you just spend enough time reading. And also, like, that will get you more familiar with the code base in general. And that's always valuable. Like, even as a modder, like, just being more familiar with the existing code base, it's invaluable, really. So I recommend you just, uh, if you have some topic of interest, you just try to find it. And then try to figure out how it works. You can also set... So you can actually use DNSpy as a debugger. So let's try that right now. Let's go to like, let's try to figure out how the taverns work, for example. So let's look at like, let's search for innkeeper. That gives us nothing. Let's search for tavern. So this is the kind of the process. We just type random words and see what happens. Tavern gives us something. This looks very interesting. Tavern employees campaign behavior. Let me make this a bit larger for you. So tavern employees campaign behavior. And this follows the model that we, or this like, the way the tail world's behaviors kind of work is that they have like uh, sort of w one behavior for each like uh, zone of responsibility or like for each feature. For example, here, like one behavior for taverns kind of. And they listen to a bunch of stuff. Um, so here, let's search for keeper then, tavern keeper. 
So we can we can go we can set breakpoint for create tavern keeper if we are for some reason interested in tavern keepers, and then if we look at more, uh, we can find the dialogues for tavern keeper. And we can also set breakpoints in here. So let's set one breakpoint here, for example. And this should break when we first talk to a tavern keeper. And how do you use this debugger? Well, you press start, then you have to choose as executable. Um, the Panel Lord X. Um, and then you need some sort of arguments. And if you don't give any arguments, um, then it will just launch it with the base modules. You can also come to your launch settings, copy this line that we have in Visual Studio for starting our project from Visual Studio. You can copy this here. And the only thing you need to change is this module name. You need to change this to your module name. So you can even launch um, the game with your module like this. And we'll also set this working directory uh, correctly. So that's good. So now we can actually go in and debug a tail world's code, which is very powerful. And it can help you tremendously when you try to figure out how the game actually works. And you could even use this to debug your own code. Sometimes it's um, even better if, if your bug is somehow related to both tail world's code and your own code, it can be worth it to debugging dnspy instead of Visual Studio. So now if we go to a tavern, we will first get one, we will first hit this breakpoint of creating the tavern keeper. So here we could, um, so here we have another sort of debug view, which is very similar to the one you get in, um, in Visual Studio. So here, um, You can see the see what the arguments are. You can look at them. This is the culture, so the Batanian culture object. Not super interesting right here, but depending on where you are, this will of course be more or lesser, uh, more or less interesting to you. But so this might be something that we want to look at if we want to spawn our own NPCs in taverns or something. Okay, we can hit F five to continue. And then we can go talk to the tavern keeper and we hit our second breakpoint. And we can also use, also use the watch view. So I have some stuff here already, but I can remove them. So if you've used Visual Studio Debugger, you should be very comfortable with this. So watch view is just something where you can type your own expressions and they will be evaluated uh, in the current context. So here the context is this add dialogs. So I can type, I can use any statics that are, um, for example, hero main hero is one static, which will give me my main character hero object. And so here, for example, if we are interested in what the character object one-to-one -one conversation character is, um, we can look at this. So. The one-to-one -one conversation character is the tavern keeper, unsurprisingly. Um, and you could also just call in basically any uh, any methods or anything you can know anything you know how to type. You can type here in the watch window. So, for example, if we want to check if the if our one-to-one -one character conversation character is our main hero. We can type expressions here. Oh, well, types do not match. So character object. Okay, I well here you see if you don't know how to type things, then you cannot actually do this. So there's no character objects there. That's interesting. Let's see. So well now we can go on an adventure and see why does not why does hero not have a character object? We can go to the hero type. Yes. 
hero object. It has character object. Did I mistype it? Hero does not contain definition for character object. Oh, I mistyped it. Character object. Okay, so now you can see that uh, the tavern keeper is not the main hero, unsurprisingly. But you can write any sort of expressions here. But you can you see that without other competition is sometimes a bit more difficult than it should be. Um, but yeah, basically just. Looking around here for enough time, you will learn how the game, how the code base roughly works. You have even more stuff here, for example, the call stack, very useful, list of your breakpoints, all sorts of stuff. Um, so one more thing that is very powerful about DNSpy is the ability to go up and down all sorts of call chains. So um, if you you can basically just right click anything and click analyze or uh, hover it and press control shift R, but I think the right click method is sometimes more useful. And then you get this analyzer view where you can both where you can go both ways along like uh, this call pass. So you can see that add dialogues is used from on session launch. On session launch is used from registry events. And you can see where this is used from. It's used from campaign behavior manager and so on and so forth. This is extremely useful whenever you're trying to figure out um, like how the how different things are called from different places. Also, like um if you look, for example look at the hero object again. I closed it just now, but we can go back to hero. If you, for example, want to find out like uh, how do heroes get money, you can come here to hero gold. You can analyze gold. Uh, the setter will be the part that um, changes the money amount, right? So you can you can basically find out all the places where heroes gain or lose money. So this gives you this gives you um, expenses from auto recruitment, party expenses, give share of loot to party, and so immediately you find like where is battle loot calculated, and very useful stuff. This is um, most of the time when I have no idea where something is located, um, you just think of like. Okay, what property does this thing set? And then you can, maybe the property will be easier to find. And then you just analyze the setter of the property. This is very powerful. And do it, I do this all the time. So here, like, okay, so apparently most of the things that are related to players' code amount are in default clan finance mono. So let's just, if I'm interested in the clan finances or the finances of the hero, and I just go and read default clan finance model because that seems where the hero code is um, most of the time manipulated from. Very powerful. So in the next episode, we want to add a new NPC to the workshops. So let's try to find out um, where the uh, workshop NPCs are added to the scene. So if we if we search again for workshop, can we find some place? Uh, where where they would add NPCs, and if we look at workshop campaign behavior, mm, and look at the events this listens to, can we find something that looks good? Okay, maybe not. What about workshop characters campaign behavior? Okay, this looks better, right? So here we are listening to. I mean, already the name name seems better. Workshop characters behavior, uh, and this listens to location characters are ready to spawn event. And then if we go look at this, you can see that they have this method add workshop and uh, shop workers to town center, and this will actually be exactly the thing that we need to spawn our 
own npc inside workshops or like more like this so and, and then you can you want to more not want to know more like what, how this works what is location character and then what is a location with id and why do they add location characters to the location with id you can go and you can go on and like go both ways here at press that character go look at what this is you can go into location character look at what location character is and you see how you can basically just uh reverse engineering uh, you can use this to reverse engineer how uh, the tail world's code works well it's definitely very powerful so you can you can do most of your coding just copying stuff from tail world's code most of the stuff that you want to achieve are done already somewhere. So at least if you're trying to do something reasonable. And of course, the other option is looking at existing mods and try to find like which mods um, or try to find mod code from the GitHub. But I kind of prefer just reading the base game code because at least I think that uh, they use stuff in the intended way most of the time. So like. If the if the designers of the systems have some intention, then more likely the world's own code follows those intentions. So one more feature of DN Spy that I want to highlight is the ability to reload all assemblies with one click. So for example, if you update your game, or if there is a hotfix, um, or if you're debugging your own binaries and you want to just reload everything quickly, you can just Come here to file and reload all assemblies and it will open up all the files you had again after reloading everything again from the disk but i think this covers most of the things that i want to talk about when looking at uh, looking at debugging with dnspy and reverse engineering with dnspy so so i want to thank you very much for watching and i hope to see you in the next episode